Hello, I'm David Fitzpatrick and this is my colleague Alex Benson from Ruskid Air Management Limited. Welcome to our credited CPD video seminar on the best practice for the installation of smoke and fire dampers. <laughs> With the publication of DW145 in May 2010, we now have a document that examines all the principles and the disciplines for the installation of smoke and fire dampers. Today, our Managing Director, Kevin Munson, will break down the DW145 document into sections and look at why DW145 has been published and who should be using it. Yes, today I will take a brief overview of each section of the DW145 document and the core activities including testing of dampers and the approval for the installation methods. DW145 not only recognises these procedures but also looks at the responsibilities for each of these core activities. The productivity and profitability issues that arise from poor communication within the team are well documented. Less highlighted the importance of the life safety products that go into our buildings, particularly in the area of fire and smoke control. The technical committee within the ductwork group of HVCA have looked at this and have tried to highlight the responsibilities that are associated for each of the particular activities and trades working on a project. The emphasis in the guide will always be on teamwork. It is important that the team works together, recognising not only what each individual has to do, but how they work together to achieve the goal. It also highlights the importance of third party tested data. This gives comfort to the client and the designers, because what happens here is we take a manufacturer's test data and this is witnessed by an independent third party. This independent third party will also carry out regular audits to ensure that the products are made today as they were tested some time ago. The guide recognises the importance of project specific sketches. These sketches will include the damper, the installation frame, method and the penetration seals. These sketches will also detail the requirements for handover and of completion tests. Also highlighted should be future access testing for maintenance of the ongoing building. Upon receipt of these sketches, the principal contractor will be required to provide a planned sequence of installation, detailing the sequence for the barrier, the damper, the ductwork and the penetration seals. The Construction, Design and Management Regulations of 2007 recommend that the client appoint a CDM coordinator. A CDM coordinator will provide good communication across the whole team from design, manufacture and installation. A summary of the CDM Regulations 2007 can be found on the HSE website. Throughout the guide, practical considerations are given to the installation methods. Generic methods proposed are support to be supported by the damper's manufacturing data. It also considers the use of dry line stability and how installation methods can be used for this type of fixing. The ductwork group has a preference for the sleeve and angle arrangement as a best practice for fixing within the drywall lining. This can also be used for the masonry wall construction. It is also important to recognise the penetration seal between the outside of the damper and the barrier of which it is protecting. The, pe the penetration seal must be applied as tested. It is also important to recognise spatial requirements not just for the installation method, but for future access 
when we are looking at maintaining and regularly testing the dampers through the life of the building. These are your association bodies and professional institutions who have improved the intent of DW145. It is not the ductwork group trying to be awkward or a manufacturer's soapbox, but it is a recognition that damper installations should and need to be done better. And within HVCA, they are providing the guidance and support to help do this. The industry faces significant changes over the next few years, particularly in regards to assessment. Current UK testing of a full range of products is being replaced by harmonised European standards. This could bring about some confusion on which standards have been used for which projects and how much education has been done within the team. How would you interpret this, Kevin? OK. For Dempers, there was an ad hoc UK test standard, BS476 Part 20. We now have the European standard in place and a product standard, BSEN 15650. This standard and the testing of dampers we will discuss later, but it is important to recognise that with a product standard comes along CE marking. Whilst the UK has previously opted out of the CE marking principle, we now will be towing the line and therefore from July of 2013 all fire and smoke dampers supplied to the industry will need to be CE marked. The guide has been compiled and presented in such a way to allow all parties in the design process to understand not only their responsibilities but those of the team as a whole. The guide also recommends using the Bisria guide a design framework for building services when allocating specific activities. This ensures that the complete team from design, manufacture, installation, future testing all work together and the companies are working as one. Section 3, Main Design Criteria and Responsibilities outlines three main design criteria that need to be met. The installation methods meet the system design specification with regard to fire classification. The damper and installation is in accordance with the manufacturer's tested methods. That the damper should be fixed either directly or adjacent to the barrier and independently supported from the connecting ductwork. Fire and smoke dampers are installed as part of a life safety of the building. Difficulties associated with building services or individuals' opinions of how this should be achieved cannot override the design and the tested methods of the independently tested damper arrangement. The guide recognises the parties that may be involved in establishing a compliant damper arrangement, the architect and the client, the system specifier and designer, damper manufacturers, building control and fire authorities. The architect and client will have an input into how they want the building to look and to work. A system specifier and designer needs to understand again how this building will work and come alive. As damper manufacturers, we will supply the dampers to the detailed design and supply the tested data. Building control and fire authorities. This work will need to be approved by building control and make sure that the system works to the regulations laid down in the building control regulations, approved document B, as well as meeting the client's aspirations. A project manager, mechanical services contractor, damper installations contractor, again all play a major part, particularly the damper installation contractor whose job it will be to position the dampers along with the ductwork. Fire barrier contractor and penetration seal specialists are becoming ever more increasingly involved in the damper installation. Figure 1 of DW145 indicates particular responsibilities that are allocated to the project specific team. 
The key activities to be considered are fire and smoke compartmentation. It is important that fire strategy drawings are produced and are referred to and referenced to the building control officer. System specification and design. Submit design for the approval. This goes without saying, but it is important that the design meets both the client's needs and the building officer's needs as they will ultimately need to be signed off at the completion of the contract. Compliance with building regulations. The building control officer needs to be sure that the design will comply with the regulations laid down in approved document B. Damper specification. The designer is to specify the type of damper. Is it to be a fire damper or a smoke damper? And what accessories will be needed? Damper assembly selection. The damper manufacturer will provide evidence that the dampers being used meet the requirements of the European Standard 1366 and that have been fully tested and approved for the application being used. Damper procurement. The design team shall provide enough information to ensure that the damper procurement agency, usually the ductwork contractor, has full information to order dampers for all applications and locations being used on the project. Program sequence of activity. It is important that a sequence of activity is put together to ensure that each company and each operation knows when and where it is working, making sure that the ductwork, the dampers, the barrier and the penetration seals are fitted at the correct time in the construction project. The fire spreading barriers. It is important that the fire spreading barrier contractor understands that the openings need to be made specific to the type of damper and to the gap required around the damper and to the area where the penetration seal is going to be fitted. This is highly important to ensure that these dampers are then fitted as they've been tested and that the barrier opening is not too wide. Penetration seals. This follows on from having a correct barrier opening. The penetration seal should be fitted correctly as per tested. The system design must be project specific. It is not acceptable practice to follow an old job or an unrelated practice from a previous project. Whilst it is important to, to ensure that only tested dampers and installation details are used, it is imperative to understand that projects will be different. We can deal with a shed on a greenfield site or a high-rise office block or hospital in a city centre. It is therefore imperative that the damper manufacturers, the designers and the installers work as a team to make sure we get this process as smooth as possible.